and the changes that uh, that creates along the way. So, brief agenda. I'm going to take you through how we establish the program baseline, our approach to managing it, and then get into the change management, contingency management, the baseline as it stands today, uh, and then some lessons learned uh, and a quick summary at the end. Program controls people are normally called in the business bean counters. That's not flashy, it's all about managing the money and the time. So the first thing that was done, uh, and Russell alluded to it earlier on, is when CLM uh, and ODA got themselves together, said what are we going to do? How are we going to manage this project? How are we going to deliver it on time in <coughs> and to the budget that, uh, that had been allocated? So. The, uh, one of the, the uh, fundamental um, objects of good program management is to create a baseline. How are you going to deliver the project? What are your thoughts? So in late 2006, early 2007, the, the team that was uh, being assembled at that time uh, developed a top-down approach. Following on from the, the bid that was made um, to the IOC, uh, the original baseline budget that was in the bid, I think you can remember, was, I think it was about two and a half billion. Um, the team got together and said, what's the scope? What's the schedule? What's, what are our initial estimates? And, uh, it, and what are the risks? Because there were some large risks involved in building the, the, the program. The original budget that was set was for the, the UK budget for the Olympics was 9.3 billion in the end. Uh, and there was a lot of press uh, comment about that, uh, the difference between what had been quoted um, in the bid and what we actually uh, were able to manage against. However, we did establish the, the, the baseline. That was agreed in November of 2007. That was about 18 months after the award of uh, London 2012. Um, and it was a top-down approach. Um, the level of detail at that time uh, was minimal in certain areas, um, greater in other areas. But the team developed um, some scopes for each of the elements. They broke, they broke the progr program down into its constituent uh, work breakdown. Uh, and they, they worked up a scope, a schedule, a cost budget, and the risk associated with delivering those projects and the program as a whole. <coughs> and that was captured in what we fondly call the yellow book. I think you can see why. <laughs> um, and that baseline was eventually agreed, approved and published in November 2007. And that's what we've been working from, from that point in time. And once it was approved, the only basis that we could uh, change what was written in that book was through change control. Um, a lot of assumptions were made at that time. Uh, and you'll see a bit later on, I've got a, um, a graph of the original baseline budget and the current budget. And it's quite different in profile. Uh, so once we'd established the baseline, how are we going to manage it? We set some rules. It's imperative that we measure against the plan. But one of the essentials of good program management is that that plan has to reflect some kind of reality. Uh, I, I've worked on a number of projects around the world that have set their plans. Then clients and, and executive management have rigidly kept to that plan, come what may. And if there's one thing that's sure in this world, things are going to change. So you've got to make the whole approach to managing the baseline flexible. So it has to be current. You need to know where you are, and you need to know where you're going to be able to manage the situations that arrive. So some rules. 
we knew the plan would evolve. A lot of assumptions had been uh, put into the November 2007 baseline. A lot of risk had been put in, and I'll show you the risk, the risk values later on. So we expected things to change. Once the detailed design had been um, developed, we evolved then into the contracting process, which James was talking about earlier on, um, and then engaged the Tier 1 contractors. We awarded those Tier 1 contracts. So then the contractors developed their own plans to, to deliver whatever they contracted to build. So as the contracts were placed, one of our rules was, once the contract was in place, we would agree an accepted schedule and cost profile with, with the contractor, and then that would be adopted as our baseline. And that baseline would be taken through change control as, as a, an approval process. <coughs> so, what we fondly call our current baseline budget, uh, in, it's called our CBB, equals the original baseline plus approved changes. And no matter how small or insignificant those changes are, they come through change control. And we have a, a delegated authority levels which allow that to happen more efficiently for a very, very small change. We've achieved this through focused replanning. Um, a number of people I've talked to around the industry uh, advocate that, yes, things change. Why not do a regular rebaseline every, every 12 months or every six months just to, to refresh the whole thing? What we decided to do on, on the Olympic program was deal with significant events when they happened so that the, the, the baseline is continually changing, it's evolving as our knowledge grows. So, we use knowledge-based updates as more information becomes available to inform the, the replan. And one of the, the good examples normally changes all about, well, how much more is it going to cost? Um, the dynamics on, uh, on the Olympic program are not just how much is, is it going to cost, how much additional is it going to cost, what are the opportunities as well? So we've actively, um, through the risk process, managed our opportunities. And there was a £40 million saving in SBH through value engineering and, and scope adjustments. And that was brought through when it was defined so that that money could be used for other, other issues that may well come down the line. Um, and that money was actually given back to contingency. So we have a dynamic going through the whole program uh, like that. Money's taken, money's given back. And I'll show you uh, some of the results of that a little bit later on. <coughs> we also, through the risk and the trend process that Russell talked about earlier on, um, anticipate changes coming through. So you identify a risk. You manage that risk. It becomes a reality or it goes away. We know that through the process, the monthly process that we go through. If it's becoming a reality, it becomes a trend. Then, if that trend matures, when that match trend matures, matures, I should say, then it becomes change, and then it's reflected in the baseline. And that keeps the whole system current. And we've approached it by project, by sub-project, or by a whole bunch of projects in, in one instance. Um, we, we did one major re-baseline of the whole program in April, May 2009. Uh, when all the major integration issues uh, we saw at that time were defined and identified. <coughs> that was the only major base rebaseline that we had, and that was quite a, uh, a stressful couple of months, as you can quite imagine, um, with 40 to 50 major projects being uh, rebaselined all at once. I've mentioned this before, one of the, <laughs> the certainties of life in these things will change. So I'm going to take you through, not in detail, you probably can't read that, but change management, rigorous change management, once the baselines had been set, was uh, a prerequisite for 
the ODI executive management and the CLM executive management and all the projects. This just, uh, and you can, you can look at this at your leisure um, from the slides, um, is our monthly cycle. Um, and this, this happens every month. Um, at the end of the month, changes are raised by the projects and submitted to the uh, change coordination group, which is part of my group. We then have an internal um, meeting, an internal change board at the end of the first week, which is the blue box at the top there. Um, sorry, the yellow box, the, the yellow box setting down. Um, then from that, um, <coughs> decisions are made, queries are raised, uh, and the project and the program have two weeks to get that change to a mature state uh, to bring to the program change board, in which the funders are represented, the ODA, CLM, and all the major projects um, uh, uh, <coughs> congregate to discuss and agree the changes that are going to be put through the system for that month. Some of, the, some of those changes require a higher level of, level of approval uh, and will go to either the, uh, the government for approval or to the funders group for approval. So that adds a little bit more time to the whole process. But effectively, uh, at the end of the, the, uh, the month in question, changes will have been brought through, approved, and implemented into the control budget so that we can start the next monthly cycle from an update um, and, and uh, keep things current as to, uh, to where we think we are, where we think we're going. It's a very rigorous process. It involves, I think, probably the worst case we've had is probably 10 projects involved in one change. So that's 10 project managers, probably three or four project sponsors, uh, half a dozen executive management, and they all have to sign off and agree to that change. So it's a very, uh, very intensive process. And we have three people in the centre who, who coordinate that change and try to get people to talk together to, uh, <laughs> to get the, the whole situation agreed. Change since November 2007 to the, to, to March, to the March change board, which was the 49th change board of the series. We've just had our 50th yesterday. Um, we've had 4,600 changes raised to date. 3,300 approximately of those changes have now been approved. So not all change gets through. Um, 778 million pounds has been returned to funders. Uh, and you can see there our original uh, contingency um, pots of money were that we had just under a billion of project contingency. Uh, and, and that is managed by the ODA. Um, the project managers have to bring a change to the change board to get that money released to their project so they can spend it. Uh, there were just under a billion of program contingency and just over a billion of funders contingency. <coughs> We've actually drawn down those amounts, 410 million from project, 262 million from a program and 625 million. And you can see the profile here of the way the changes have gone. Throughout 07 and 08, we were going through design development into the build in 2009, big venue build 2010, and you can see how the change has uh, manifested itself through, through the period of time there. Now we have various um, levels of authority. The red, the big red bars here, are the delegated authorities that Russell mentioned earlier. Those are changes worth less than 250,000. And you can see we've had a lot of those. So very small changes, uh, probably on average five to six million a month on the delegated authorities. Um, but we're only running, over the last nine months, about an average of 12, 12 million draw on project contingency and 18 million on program. Um, so we've kept, we've kept a very strict and tight um, 
uh, regime on, on the whole of project change. But it, it happens. There have, have been some big changes there. Uh, I think that March of 2009 was the incorporation of the village um, and uh, um, moving from a private finance to uh, the public financed um, project as it was. I think we drew down uh, yeah, just under a, just under 100 million for the village at that, in that point in time. So hopefully you can see how things the the baseline was established back here. Some changes as the design developed, but major changes when you get into delivery and, and things happen. Integration has caused a lot of those changes as well. Things either happening or, or, or assumptions that were made in the early stages or scope gaps as we call them, um, manifesting themselves and being sorted out. Through all that time, um, we've had to track where we're going. So what I've done there is, is this is our contingency dashboard. Um, this tracks where our contingency is going to. We need to know whether or not we're going to run out of money. Uh, fortunately, we're not in that position. We haven't been in that position. But this, the, the whole purpose of these tracking systems is to tell us at the earliest possible time if we're running into trouble. So we track, we track the run rate. That's how much we're drawing down every month. That's the, pro, the project and the program contingency there. Um, you can see at the top there in box one where we currently are with the remaining contingency. Um, now some of that money has been given back. Um, the risk analysis, the program risk analysis is portrayed in boxes five and six there, and that comes from Russell, from working very closely with uh, all the executive managers, the projects, uh, and taking a program view, so that we know where we are uh, on every element of the project and the program uh, every month. So that's some tools that we use uh, to actually track and manage our way through the program. And currently we have a glide path through to completion, which will hopefully um, net us another 200 million saving over the whole pro program. That's our target, that's where we drive, and that's where we drive the projects as well, through the, uh, the monthly um, cost, trend, risk, and uh, anticipated final cost reviews that we have. The baseline today is the dark blue line on the top. The original baseline budget is the light blue line underneath. Now the reason it was like that was because of the risk pots. If, if, you, if you remember back, we had um, almost three, three billion pounds of contingency. Um, I don't think the, uh, the thought processes were, were that mature at that time to determine when we thought that contingency was going to be drawn down, so it was all back-ended. And you can see the, the lift up at, at the end. And we have drawn down some funders contingency, which was not in the original ODA budget. So that is the effect of change. It's brought the whole of the expenditure further forward as things have happened. Uh, actual cost profile is the red line. Uh, it very much follows the current, uh, the current baseline. And that goes back to my point, keeping the, current, uh, the, the baseline current. We've kept it within focus. We know from this point in time, which is um, a, a, in March, where we need to go to complete the program um, early next year. And the major venue build will be completed in, in July of this year. So that is a very graphic effect, uh, that graphic picture of how change can affect your program. But you can see um, in the very early days there, things were quite close to, closely aligned with uh, the baseline that we actually set ourselves. And that's all enabled us through rigorous management of the whole process to keep the whole uh, program on track to deliver 
12 months early. So, keeping a realistic baseline and effective management has enabled us to achieve the build that we've got today. And we've handed the stadium over um, on the 31st of March. The velodrome was handed over in, uh, in January. The first of the village plots were handed over uh, at the end of March as well. We finished the, uh, uh, the Lee Valley uh, canoe venue. Um, Weymouth is finished. And we're well on the way to completing the infrastructure on the park. You can see all the bridges and uh, the roads, uh, certainly uh, there now. Uh, the major landscaped areas, the soft landscaping is, 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 uh, is coming to a conclusion. Uh, and uh, the last venue that will be completed on the park is probably going to be the uh, is is will will be the aquatic centre in in July. Uh, the, the temporary venue next door to it will be the um, the water polo. But the ODA baseline uh, started at 7.1 billion. The funders baseline on top of that was another billion, which was its the, the billion of contingency that I talked about. That is now um, a capped budget of 7.32 billion for the ODA. We have actually given back 778 million to, to the program to be used for other aspects of the, uh, the, uh, the whole Olympic program. Uh, our anticipated final cost currently is 7.3 billion. Um, and we have a, a target to achieve a couple of hundred million less than that. If, uh, if everything goes our way between now and the, uh, the end of next year, or the middle of next year, sorry, end of next year would be too late. So, what have we learned? Any change process can be gamed. <laughs> the central function has had to be alert to, uh, to maintain the in integrity of the baseline. And there are a lot of different processes within program controls that you can use, not just the change process and the baseline process. And we've used those quite effectively as checks and balances. So that we, we do get an indication when, when a project or a project team is trying to play the game, as we call it. <coughs> the rules for change rely on controlling the access to contingency. And we've very st had very string stringent rules on how contingency can be released. And you saw that earlier on with the, uh, with the change control process that we've set up and we've rigorously managed. Uh, projects with provisions in their baselines um, can circumvent the rules. What we've actively um, done with the project's concurrence is we've had a very clear vision on the provisions at any one point in time that are in the project's baseline, and we've driven them out. Where they believe they are not going to spend the money, they will bring that change through change control, and they will release the money back to project contingency or program contingency. Um, so that uh, that gives the ODA executive management more flexibility on the way they can use and, uh, and manage their money. It's not been easy. Um, a lot, of, a lot of projects, particularly in the early days, were hiding their money. Uh, we've had to tease that out. Uh, but that, through the uh, anticipated final cost and trending process and the risk process, has, uh, has worked pretty well. Uh, and they all know where they stand now. There are checks and balances there, but we've been fair as well. Where they've got genuine change, it normally goes through quite easily. Um, earned value analysis as well um, over the program. We've had uh, the whole program, the capital program has been managed through earn value. So that means the contractors have to have an accepted schedule which is cost loaded and phased and that we, we approve that and then that is reflected in our baselines. And then as we progress, we earn that value through progress assessments. If projects fail to deliver through performance related um, issues, some will be tempted to change the plan. Now we've resisted that. Where the plan is wholly out of date, we've agreed mutually to make a change to the plan. And you'll see, in, a, in a, I think there's a couple of graphs. Uh, 
So executive management have been involved all the way through. They know of the change early through the risk process or the trending process. When the change matures, they are, they are well uh, able to make meaningful and um, <coughs> focused decisions so that we can correct the plan to keep focus on our delivery, uh, delivery focus. Authorising new or amended scope has worked pretty well. We had a lot of scope gaps in the original plan. Those were worked through as the design was developed and the detail became available. But the thing we've had to be most vigilant against is the nil value cost uh, changes. Now that is where projects want to rephase all or part of their works and they do it by stealth. They call it a nil cost change. They try to put it through a project management change which is, which is the lowest level of authorization you can get. And then we get caught out. We've had probably half a dozen major changes that have slipped through the net that we've, we've um, had to readdress <laughs> um, through the whole of the, uh, the last couple of years or so. But we've caught them. Uh, and the projects have learned from their experiences as well as the uh, executive management. Um, lessons learned on SPI. You can see there were some major readjustments in uh, February of 2010. That was a major change on, on the Aquatic Centre. The Aquatic Centre did have trouble. Um, we lost 13 weeks of the schedule due to the steel work on the roof. Um, it was a very, very complex structure. Um, so we decided at that point to make a, readjust, a major readjustment to the Aquatics program to bring it back in line to keep our focus on how, how we were going to recover from the, uh, the 13 weeks we'd lost there. And uh, in, I think that's November of last year, um, we went through, the, the village went through a similar series of uh, issues with schedule. And during the October, November uh, period, um, almost all of the village plots were re-baselined because we were, uh, we'd set some very aggressive um, early finish dates for the village, um, village blocks which effectively uh, needed to be relaxed. Uh, we're still delivering the, the village with three or four months of float uh, because LOCOG do not take over the village in its entirety until January of 2012. Our original uh, plan was to complete the whole of the village by July 2011. It's now going to be finished in October. So there was a major readjustment there. So you can see on, on, the, uh, on the trends there, um, we do actively manage the, the baseline that we have so that we can make effective management decisions. And again, th finally, the... Uh, New and amended scope additions. Um, I'll draw your attention to the final bar there. You can see how the perform what we call the performance baseline, and that's the uh, the, pro the, the project's baselines without contingency has moved over the months, and we track we track the movements as well. We don't only track the overall movements of the program. This is the whole whole program, but each individual project. Uh, we know where their, pro their, their, their budgets have moved uh, over time. And you can see the creep as various uh, new or amended uh, pieces of scope come in. Um, delays from integration problems, etc., etc. And we keep track of that. In summary, keeping the program and the project baselines current is essential for effective management decision making. Are they? That's the point I want to try and uh, hopefully got over to you today. Um, and updating that is rigorously, and I mean rigorously, and, and, and any, any project manager on the program will, will tell you that uh, they go, have to go through a lot of hoops to, to maintain their, their baseline and bring their project in successfully. Thank you very much.
by the venue, such as Broxbourne, Eaton Dorney, where the rowing will be, uh, Weymouth, where the sailing will be. Everybody thinks it's just on the park, but it's not. So I'm going to talk through some of those um, risks as we go through and how they've changed and what we think we're facing going ahead from here. As I say, lots of photographs, so if you get fed up with the bullet points, you can always just, just look at the photos. I'm quite happy if people want to ask questions as you go along, because quite often people forget about them later on, so feel free if you, if you want to ask me something. So this picture, this is the Velodrome. 